God's blessings be upon you, and welcome to Pastor Andrew's Inspirations. As of today, we have 34 subscribers in our congregation, and just over 215 hours of view time. Praise God for you all, and welcome. I'd like to welcome my newest members, Deacon Charlie Bulchak from Christian Leaders Institute and Simon Rusinski. To be helpful and be able to invest a little in the Christian Leaders Institute where, where I am ordained with, we must reach 1,000 subscribers and get 4,000 viewing hours. Please share my channel with your friends, family, or anyone you think needs an uplift and get them to subscribe. I started this to encourage and brighten your days. Be the happiest and don't dwell on the unwanted. Everything you can do to help me is loved. And remember, it costs nothing to you. Just subscribe, click the bell, Share with everyone, listen, and be blessed with positive and happy days. Father, please help us to rest in your happiness, to allow a smile to linger on our lips, to dwell within a wonderful memory, to walk back through sunlit places. Please help us to awake with hope, to engage with life in all its variety, to take in the beauty of other joys, of others' joys, to touch the souls of those we meet with thankfulness. Please help us to sing with faith, to carry the truth close in our hearts always, to rejoice at new life, and to have peace as we age. Please help us to indulge in love, to breathe in the sweetness of intimacy, to taste the kindness of friendship, to feel the warmth of embrace. Please help us not to miss a single drop of heaven, to catch each moment and drink in the great joy of life. Amen. Be happy with God. In Romans chapter 12, Verse 11, it reads, Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. In other words, do not lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor. Be aglow and burning with the Spirit, serving the Lord. Do you feel unhappy, unwanted, unneeded even? God's humans should be the happiest people on earth. So happy that other people will notice. Why? Because we not only have a marvelous forthcoming, but we can enjoy life now. That's what living your best life today is all about. Don't just go through the movements in life. Make a choice that you are not going to live another day without the joy of the Lord in your life, without love, peace, and passion, without being excited about your life. Also, comprehend that you do not have to have something remarkable occurring in your life to be excited. You may not have the ideal job, or the ideal marriage, or live in the ideal environment, but you can still choose to live each day aglow with God's presence. Matthew Henry said, In him the day spring from one high has visited the world, and happy are we forever happy if that dayspring arise in our hearts. 
Matthew also said, after he was robbed, Thank God, though they took my money, they did not take my life. That day star is in our hearts. It's God's spark. And we were born with it. And you can relight that spark again. Money is just paper and metal. Your life is so much more than that. Most people don't like life. They just bear it. They think that life must be flawless for them to be happy. So they're always looking for a change for the better. If I could just alter my state of affairs, life would be great. If I could just get rid of all my troubles, life would be fine. But there's no such thing as a trouble-free life. If you're going to be taught to be happy, to be joyful, you must be taught to be joyful in the circumstance, in the troubles, and in the events of life. Amy Carmichael said, There is nothing dreary and doubtful about life. It is meant to be continually joyful. We are called to a settled happiness in the Lord, whose joy is our strength. Amen? Happiness comes from the root word that we get happening from the events. Joy is e internal. Happiness is external. You have a happy time at Wonderland. You leave and you lose your happiness. Joy can be constant. How do we have joy despite what is going on in our life. We are going to learn from Paul from this scripture that he wrote to believers in Philippi. He seemed optimistic and happy with his lot even though being locked up in prison and facing an unsure future. The last four years of Paul's life were wretched. He spent two years in prison in Caesarea, and then he was put on a ship to go to Rome to appear before Nero, who was known for his cruelty against Christians. On the way, he shipwrecked, marooned on an island bitten by a poisonous serpent, endured the winter there, continued to roam, and spent another two years in prison, looming trial to be put to death. During this two-year period in Rome, he is shackled to a guard for 24 hours a day. He has totally no privacy. Every four hours, he got a new guard. Yet despite all these circumstances, Paul says in Philippians chapter 1, verse 18, I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice. What is Paul's secret? How does he stay so optimistic in prison, riding above his troubles, and being joyful? although everything has not turned out the way he planned it. Dear Lord, thank you for all your blessings for our families, friends, and neighbors. Thank you for all the beauty in the skies, the lakes, and the mountains. Thank you for all the excitement of celebration, birthdays, weddings, and christenings. 
Thank you for all the variety of animals, birds, and insects. Thank you for all the enrichment of music, art, and literature. Thank you for the amazing jigsaw of life. What a beautiful picture is made when we place all these pieces together. Thank you for the promise of eternity, for the sacrifices you made so that we can be free. Free to make our life into a glorious patchwork of thanksgiving that carries us onwards to the promises of new heavenly pieces to add to all that we already hold. Thank you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. His words here reveal four essentials for a joyful life. Firstly, we need a perspective to live from. Everyone has troubles. When you tuned in today, you just brought them in here with you. Your troubles are not so vital as how you are looking at those troubles. The way you look at that problem is much more important than the problem. Your viewpoint makes the difference. We can see the best even in the worst. We can see God at work in the problems even when they don't go our way. If we really believe God is sovereign, we've got to believe this. This is almost an identical echo of Joseph's words to his problems who sold him to Egypt. In Genesis chapter 50 verses 19 and 20 Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Paul had always wanted to go to Rome. He meant to have a crusade. Instead, God put him in prison, where he would write the New Testament. He was shackled to the palace guard, the elite troops of the Roman Empire. He was able to impact lives from within the palace. And outside, things were moving. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. Amazing everything that is believed bad from the human perspective and turned out to be good in God's perspective. This is the attitude we must adopt. This is the outlook you need to live from if you are going to have joy in your life. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 sums up this principle. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. The lesson. God has a purpose behind every one of our problems. Get this and let joy fill our hearts. A mother was doing embroidery, and her little boy comes by her side. He looked up from the floor and asked, What are you doing, Mommy? She informed him that she was making a beautiful flower. It looks like a mess to me, he said looking from the underside that is what you'd see everything looked so jumbled up with loose thread and knots here and there the mom says son go and play for a while and when i'm finished i will let you see it from my side finally the boy saw it from the right side and he saw a beautiful flower by a sunset he could not believe it, because from underneath it looked so messy. God has a design. 
we cannot fully see all in its beauty from this side of heaven. But one day we will, when we see it from his viewpoint. Secondly, we need a priority to live by. When things get tough, we need to be clear what is important and what is not. We want to separate the trivial from the significant. We can live our life bored down by trivial matters, usually the troubles, or be driven by the significant things of life, the matters of great priority. Either we decide what's important in our life, or we let other people decide what's important. If we don't choose our priorities, we'll go around putting out one fire after another, living our life simply from trouble to trouble, to the next problem and not choosing what's important. Look at what Paul says. There are competitors outside criticizing him and attacking his ministry. They are doing it out of envy and rivalry, out of selfish ambition, wanting to stir up trouble for me. If we want something to steal our joy quicker than anything else, just listen to all the criticism people are throwing up against us. But, but what does it matter? The important thing is that every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is being preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Paul says he is not going to let anyone steal his joy, not situations nor denigrators. He said their motives may be wrong, their style may be wrong, but if the message is getting out, so what? But what does it matter? This is the only question in this whole book. It is a question of priority. We do not want to major on the minor. Some things are just not worth fighting about or losing sleep over. There will be differences but so let them be. Paul had set his priorities clear and will not let criticisms or rivalry steal his joy. Learn this. Don't let petty things ruin your day and rob you of joy. It's not worth it. Don't have to lose sleep over it. No, you don't. You don't need to lose your sleep. Differences will always exist. The lesson here is don't major on the minor things of life. Let them go. Focus on what really counts. Know what is important. Thirdly, we need the power to live on. We need strength to make it and to keep on going. Problems can wear us out and drain us completely. One crisis after another can really cripple us if we have no help. We need a fresh power supply. We will continue to rejoice, for we know that through our prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to us will turn out for our deliverance. We eagerly expect and hope that we will in no way be ashamed, but will sufficient will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in our bodies. Paul says, we have two things that give us strength and keep us going in this harsh environment, the prayers of the people and the help of the Holy Spirit. He said 
he eagerly expected and hoped that he would have enough courage to face the challenges. That's where he has placed his expectation and hope in God. We can't live without hope, but you can pin we can pin our hope in people or circumstances. Both will change. We need God's help. During the American Revolution, when the army had suffered several setbacks, a farmer who lived near the battlefield came to, into General Washington's camp unseen or heard. Suddenly, his ears caught an earnest voice raised in painful prayer. On coming nearer, he saw it was the great general. Washington was on his knees in the snow, his cheeks wet with tears. He was asking God for help and leadership. The farmer crept away and returned home. He said to his family, it's going to be all right. We are going to win. What makes you think so? His wife asked. Well, said the farmer, I heard General Washington pray such a passionate prayer I have never heard before, and God will surely hear and answer that kind of prayer. The farmer was right. It happened because man is willing to put his hope in God. Paul says later in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. The lesson? Pray and pin your hope in God. The summary so far, we need to see things from God's perspective. Major on the important things in life. And not let the trivial things rob us of joy and focus. And always lean on God's strength through prayer. And finally, fourthly, we need a purpose to live for. Paul said, For me to live in Christ and to die is gain. This is Paul's purpose of living. He lives to preach the gospel. This goal provides him the fulfillment of life. He is a happy man because he is fully satisfied with what he is doing. You may be able to take away his freedom, his privacy, his comfort, his fellowship with Christians, or everything else, but you cannot take away the joy of doing God's will. Not even the joy of leaving this world and returning home to be with the Lord. In Philippians 1, verses 22 to 26, it reads, If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. So that through my being with you, again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow because of me. Even if he stays, it would be for the sake of the believers for your progress and joy. This is Paul's purpose of living. It is for the sake of others. The best use of our life is to invest it in something that will outlast it. How? Invest in his church, the body of Christ. The things we do for one another, for fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, will be remembered. The happiest people are those who help others. This is the secret of joy. 
J O Y. J Jesus first, O others second, and Y yourself third. The reason why there is so much gloom and depression in our society is because we've mixed these things up and reversed them. We've switched the order to me first, others second, and God last, or even not even accepted. It is a fixation with self. What's best for me? What will make me happy? This is what I like to call the me, me, me generation. Most experts say this is the cause of, ri of the rising number of divorces. No wonder there is little joy in our society today, but many sorrows and pain. When we learn to have a greater purpose in our life than just ourselves, we will experience joy more than we ever imagined. There is, so, there is no such thing as problem-free living. Everyone has problems. When we live by these biblical values, then troubles just aren't as important. So what if things haven't worked out as we planned? God has a purpose that is bigger than our problems. God wants us to enjoy the rest of our life, but we need to do it His way. Charles Spurgeon said, Those who are beloved of the Lord must be the most happy and joyful people to be found anywhere upon the face of the earth. Man was not originally made to mourn. He was made to rejoice. The Garden of Eden was his place of happy abode, and as long as he continued to be to in, continued in obedience to God, nothing grew in that garden that could cause him sorrow. God made human beings as he made his other creatures to be happy. They are in their right element when they are happy. I believe that the happiest of all Christians and the truest of Christians are those who never dare to doubt God, but take his word simply as it stands and believe it and ask no question, just feeling assured that if God has said it, it will be so. It is not how much we have, but how much we enjoy that makes happiness. It is true. If you love the Lord and serve others, you will be happy. Sure, Satan made Adam and Eve mess up the good life, but it does not mean we have to. Stop being negative and stay positive and happy. Remember, God made us and wants us to be the happiest. We are in God's favor when we are happy. Also remember, never doubt God and what He has in store for your future. Take His word as it is, have faith in it, and ask nothing of God unless it is a need. Do not dwell on what you want, because wants eventually pile up and clutter your life. Instead, rejoice in what you need and have with God's help always. On this journey of happy life, we are assigned to serve our Savior by being happiest for Him. That vesting is given and supported by God Himself. We do not stay happy with money and jewels, for happiness without peace is temporal, but peace along with happiness is eternal. We live our lives, being inspired to create a happy temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell in. We serve happiest with prayer, love, 
relief of sorrow of others, and honest relations. We too, if we desire to do what is happiest according to God's inspired purpose, we shall be lied about, belittled, and despised by those who neither know us nor wish to know us. We shall be misunderstood and scrutinized by those whose minds are fixed, not entwined, in general agreement, whether religious or secular. Those who see visibility as their only existence will devalue our work and defame our name. It has been done to me. It can be done to any of us. Also, we may suffer abandonment by those in whom we once wisely trusted and whom we may have loved happily. Some begin to be happily inspired in the Holy Spirit so well, and then human veracity and the false god of this world shades their minds. They may lose sight of their true mission and be as easily corrupted by public opinion. What is that mission? It is to stay happily inspired to what God reveals to us. It is to stand upon our watch on the wall and to offer a happy hand to those whom but for our help would fail and fall. We can prevail with, with motivated, strong, and good-natured commitment to the eternal. We need not grow sad in living happiest, even though age may sadden us and the passing years sentence us to limitations in our health and lassitude of mind. May our Savior Jesus Christ grant to each of us the happiness and strength to continue in every good work. May He at the end of our living happily grant to each of us the reward of them that are happiest unto death, a crown of eternal life. Be one with the Lord. Read or listen to the Bible every day. Pray often even if it is just to get something you may need. It is always good to pray for what we need, not what we want. So if you need anything, pray happily and thankfully. These thoughts are all for the congregation of this channel, with my deepest respect and my prayers that they may strengthen our happiness, our faith, and uplift our hearts. Stay happy under God. Lord, take our hearts on a journey into your goodness and grace, where we walk on grass soft with forgiveness and wait by the everlasting lake. Lord, take our minds to a new place filled with the promise of life, where we rest with great dreams of your kingdom and wake with a new joy inside. Lord, take our souls to adventure. May we find greater freedom in you where we run with great vision and insight and trust that our dreams are from you. Lord, take us into your promise where eternity awaits at the door and we find we're renewed, redeemed, and restored. Oh, Jesus, we're alive now for you. Amen. Thanks for tuning in today. May God's blessings be upon you and have a safe week.